in 2009, my sister Polly was in a car accident. She suffered profound brain injuries and would, should have died, nearly did. Um, we were told that if she survived, um, she would have, she would probably be in a vegetative state for the rest of her life. Vegetative meaning that she would no, have no awareness of herself or her environment. And that there was a small chance that she might be minimally conscious, mm -hmm. fleeting awareness. And one of the defining features of the minimally conscious state is that you can feel pain, which you don't if you're vegetative. Um, or, you know, even more remotely, that she would survive with very profound neurological and physical disabilities. But either way, 24-7 care. And we said she, didn't, she wouldn't want this. Mm -hmm. That the poly we knew, who was a lesbian and a feminist and an activist and a very independent person who believed in her rights and her individual freedoms um, would never consent to treatment under the circumstances. And under English law, that carried absolutely no weight at all. The doctors get to make the decision based on best interests, unless you have written an advanced decision. Um, and um, they kept her alive. And she's alive still, survived now. She's done much better than they expected. She's fully conscious with profound neurological and physical disabilities. And I am outraged that her rights have been violated and that she is being continued to be maintained in a state that she would not have chosen. With my sister Jenny, um, within a year of this happening, we, we had been told that, that my family's perspective was very odd, that everybody else was desperately ple pleading for treatment on the National Health Service, mm -hmm. you know, for their loved one. Um, and that um, also that, that, that we, yeah, that we were very odd and also we realized that we didn't have, hadn't had access soon enough to enough information about, that we would have, could have used mm -hmm. in fighting for Polly. So we started with no money, with no funding, um, informally interviewing um, other family members who of course were much more like us mm. than, but just hadn't said so. Um, it was very common to find family members believing that their loved one would rather be dead than maintained in their current situation. For some reason, this really surprised clinicians. Um, we, so it's, it started with out of anger and mm -hmm. outrage and distress, as did my research on lesbianism, <laughs> really, um, about what had happened to our sister. Mm -hmm. So Jenny is a professor of um, media studies at Cardiff University. And both of us had previously done research around health issues. Mm -hmm. I hadn't actually talked about my health research yes, before, yeah. but we'd, I'd done work around childbirth mm -hmm. uh, with my mother, um, using conversation analysis to look at how interactions on counselling style interactions on helpline calls that she and other women in her organisation ran, what was good about them, what was less good, what seemed to help, what didn't seem to help. So it's a whole body of research that mm -hmm. I use feminist conversation analysis for to look at um, how to help women in crisis after childbirth and women wanting home births as well, how to empower women to get home births. Um, how did I get there? Yes. <laughs> um, so I'd done health research. Oh, yes. and also polycystic ovarian syndrome yes. um, with, a grad with an undergraduate student. Um, and also a book on women and health with Sue. So we had been working on breast cancer. So we'd done, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd done that. Jenny had a whole series of publications in uh, public education about health. Mm -hmm. So she'd studied mad cow disease, HIV AIDS, child sexual abuse. Um, so we, were, we both had the kind of, and we're both professors by this time, full professors. So we both had enough status that we could research whatever we wanted, even if we were coming at it fresh without a background in it. We could just stop our careers on doing what we had been doing and turn around and do something different because we weren't worrying about mm -hmm. tenures and promotions and all the rest. Um, we had a history of passionate feminist involvement in things we cared about. This was something we cared about and we had some background in health research. Mm -hmm. So we picked it up and we ran with it. Um, we got funding quite quickly after starting and we focused on what is family experience of having 
someone, a loved one, a relative, in a long-term coma-like state, a coma, vegetative state, or minimally conscious state. How do families feel about this? What's the process that they go through? Um, how, how, what is it like to be someone in these states? How, what are interactions with the medical profession like? What are their wishes and hopes for the future? What's it like to go through the court for withdrawal of treatment? What is it like to have someone die because the only way of allowing death for these people is by withdrawing treatment? So people die with untreated infections mm -hmm. or they die from withdrawal of artificial nutrition and hydration. Um, 